Okay, wonderful. So we are live, my friends, on YouTube. Today is 17th of, it's June, yeah. No, it's May. In June is in the next month. <laughs> I'm just confused with the dates. Welcome back. Welcome to Microsoft Excel Power Platform Meetup in Saudi Arabia. And I'm really happy to welcome you, all of you over here. And today we have a great speaker. And uh, uh, let me introduce to him quickly because he has some really cool and awesome stuff for us to show on DAX. So I'm going to keep my introduction about the meetup very short. He is for me, okay, he is uh, placed in Saudi Arabia, in the place where I am. And uh, he is from uh, Jeddah. And I wish to come someday to Jeddah and see you for me over there. And uh, maybe we can have a cup of kava together. It's an Arabic coffee. So, yes. yeah, so we can enjoy and I can talk more about Power BI with him. So, let me just quickly take a rounder about some of our past meetup. These were our past meetups. So, if you have missed it out, just quickly scan the QR code and you can always go and see these recordings, some of the great speakers. And uh, this was a past meetup during the year 2020. And we have some more people coming on the wall of achievements. And then we have an upcoming meetup from uh, uh, Danley, which is being scheduled. Uh, it is for 10th of June. And uh, then another thing, if you have any superhero skills, uh, and you would like to share with the community, then please feel free to write down to me on Excel exciting at the outlook.com. I'll be really happy to connect with you and we can schedule a session. And uh, that's how we and for me, we got connected to LinkedIn. And uh, he said that he would be really happy to give a presentation. And today we are here, the day has come. And uh, just a quick housekeeping, just to make sure that to have a best experience and uh, stability with the internet, just keep your mic muted. Most of us knows about that. Make sure that if you're having any questions, we have a special time for that. Uh, you can ask the presenter at the end of the session, any Q and A's. And this session is live stream. So uh, without taking much time, let me welcome the guest on the hot seat on the other end. Uh, for me, over to you. Thank you. Thank you, Faraz. Thank you very much for this opportunity and uh, inviting me for a session here. I'm really excited as this is uh, one of the sessions I'm delivering for Saudi Arabia, where I am. Both of us are here. Yeah. Uh, I am from the western side of Saudi Arabia. Uh, he's from the east, uh, two sides apart, but happy to meet uh, your audience, wonderful, uh, lovely audience here today. And uh, <clears throat> Let me uh, right away start my presentation and uh, it's going to be a demo heavy session. So I have just got two, three slides to share with you. Fine. By the way, we have people joining from Kuwait as well, Kuwait and Europe that's as well, great. and even some are from Saudi Arabia. Okay, that's great. That's great. Uh, so uh, I have been here in Saudi Arabia for about 20, 21 years now. been working for McDonald's as the head of uh, ERP and BI. I was, uh, uh, I was in finance, originally from finance profession, then shifted to business intelligence uh, space, where I've been uh, developing and delivering solutions and overseeing the in enterprise resource planning at uh, McDonald's here. In addition to that, I also provide uh, consulting and uh, training services on the Power BI Modern Excel uh, projects. I also lead uh, the Power BI user group here in Jeddah. Unfortunately, I haven't been able to host uh, many events due to COVID uh, and these concerns. So hopefully uh, uh, I would like to catch up with them very soon. And if you'd like to connect with me, uh, my LinkedIn profile is here. Also, QR code is there. You can scan uh, and connect. Uh, for me, you uh, okay. um, share out your screen. Okay, okay, okay. Just a second. Yeah, lovely. Now we can see all Okay, this. fine. Okay, <laughs> fine. So, 
as I said, uh, so if you would like to connect with me, uh, my LinkedIn profile is there. You can get in touch with me. And uh, my uh, Twitter handle is Excel Port. During my free time, I create uh, YouTube videos and uh, share uh, with the community, uh, mostly on Power BI. You can visit, uh, it's uh, in the name of uh, Excel Port, where you will find uh, not a lot. I've just created about 20 videos. So in today's session, let's see what we are going to discuss. So it's about DAX. So the topic is discovering DAX uh, fundamentals through common mistakes. So basically this is going to be a demo heavy session where uh, I'm going to highlight some of the common mistakes that uh, especially beginners, uh, those who have started DAX make when they build the calculations, especially building measures and calculated columns. Through this, we'll, we are trying to learn the concepts of uh, DAX. So this should be a wonderful experience for you as well. Let's get going. And uh, before we start, uh, let me complete this slide. Uh, so it's very important for you to understand the key concepts in DAX. Uh, if you are learning DAX, you should try to learn as much and try to master these uh, key concepts. They are evaluation context, iterators, context transition, and expanded tables. And last but not the least, the calculate function. So when you learn these key concepts along with calculate, you can definitely understand any calculation. You can even write even complex and complicated DAX calculations. So when learning DAX, uh, the other point is like your mind, mindset. The mindset is very important because it's not like uh, Excel, SQL, C Sharp, or any other language. Uh, it's not a traditional language where you have uh, context-based calculations and uh, scope here. So whenever you write a DAX calculation, uh, it's totally based on context. So when you understand uh, these concepts very well, it's easy for you to write DAX. And practice is very important. So the more you practice, you master this language. Uh, and uh, the other point is there is no trial and error in this language. Say, if your calculation doesn't work, you may try uh, different functions and you get a result, but it may fail when the context changes. You have to be very careful about it. So again, I go back to the concepts, right? The key concepts. Try to master them, try to learn, but then you'll start writing code. With this, uh, we'll get into uh, the demo today. Uh, let me share my... RBI file. Faraz, I hope uh, my file is visible there. Yeah, we can see your screen. Okay, that's wonderful. Okay, what I'm going to do in the session is I've got uh, 10 examples. These are like uh, questions that I got mostly from uh, the Power BI community forum where I hang out and mostly solve uh, questions that come up from users. So I listed the, some of the common mistakes people make, then try to explain how the concept has been used incorrectly or what is missing there, okay? So let's go one at a time. Let's get into the first one, which is zero and blank confusion. Okay, uh, here the question is uh, show as not recorded for each date if the value is equal to blank, otherwise show as uh, recorded, right? So whenever there is a blank, see I have a blank here, I'm supposed to show not recorded. Anything other than zero, uh, anything other than blank, like zero or any number, uh, I should show recorded, but if you see, I also have not recorded for zero value, right? Why this is happening? This is because, first, uh, let me share with you the measure, the measure I have used in this. Value recorded. You see, this is a simple measure. That's che that checks if uh, the sum of value, 
right, is equal to blank, then not recorded, otherwise recorded. So it seems okay, but there is a problem here. When it checks, it checks for blank, right? In DAX, both zero and blank are considered blank. That's the reason you are getting this result for both zero and blank, right? You should always understand how to handle this. So in this case, you need to strictly check whether a value is blank. To do that, there are two ways. First, approaches you can go and uh, apply strict evaluation using double fold, right? When you do this, it checks for blank strictly. Let's apply and check the results. Now you get the results, right? It's uh, not recorded only when there is blank. This is one way. The other option is to use the function is blank. This is same as using strict evaluation, uh, is blank. This is also going to work. You can use either of that, depending on your formula. So, and also we have a card visual here that shows uh, six here. I want to show number of zero records, right? There are one, two, three, four zero records, but it's showing six. Let's look at the measure. Here I'm counting uh, the number of rows in this table where a value is equal to zero. You should be uh, aware of the problem now. So here we need to apply strict evaluation using double equal sign. So now I am checking strictly for zero. Let's go and confirm this. Okay, now you get four. So there are four records with zero. So this is my uh, first problem I'm solving, where you should be aware of uh, the difference between um, valuation, right? Uh, strict valuation and regular valuation. Okay, great. Let's move on to the problem number two. Okay, from this problem onwards, uh, I'm going to use a small data model. Let me go ahead and share with you the model I'm using here. So I have a dates table, a products table, and they are connected to a sales data table using one to many relationship. Uh, let me go and show you how the sales data table looks like. So here I have, uh, I've got uh, the date, segment, country, and I have the sales information like number of units sold, the cost price, sales price, and the salesperson who made this particular sales. Fine. This is my simple data model for the rest of these examples. And now in the second one, we have a question, create a sales band measure. So I need to create a measure uh, that will show whether uh, the status is uh, medium, uh, low, medium, or high based on the sales volume. If the volume is less than or equal to, sorry, less than 6 million, then it has to be low. Greater than 6 million, uh, it has to show medium. Otherwise, it should be high. Now, looking at this uh, visual, uh, the first row, uh, 8.9 million, it shows as medium. It has to be high according to this condition here. Right? So something's wrong here. Let's go and have a look at the measure I have built. Sales band measure. Okay. Now, how I have built this, I'm using variables here. Variables are very important, very useful for you. It makes your code readable. And uh, in most cases, it's uh, performant. I'm assigning the total sales to a variable. Then I return and evaluate using a switch, right? So this switch statement checks uh, three status. So it evaluates uh, this variable, whether it's uh, less, than or less than 6 million, then low, greater than or equal to 6 million medium. Otherwise, it checks it's uh, greater than or equal to 8 million, then high, right? So 
what's going on here? Why I'm not getting the correct results? Okay. If you look at this, the order of evaluation is very important here, right? These are simple mistakes, but it can cost a lot. So let's have a look at this. Let's take the first line where we have a sale of uh, 8.9 million. It's tagged as median. So if you run through this uh, formula here, so 8.9 million is less than 6 million. No, it will jump to the next one and check. It's definitely uh, greater than or equal to 6 million. So uh, the median is picked in this case. Also, it's uh, greater than or equal to 8 million. Now, what's happening here is the order. You need to move uh, the highest to the top first, right? Check for high, medium, and low. Here also, I can teach you some shortcuts when building DAX meshes. For example, if you want to move this particular line to top, you can cut and paste, right? But the easiest way, the quickest way is to use shortcuts. If you click Alt key and uh, up arrow, it just moves up. It saves a lot of time. And low should go down. Now it's only a matter of fixing my commas. Let's have a look at the results now. Okay. Now I am getting the results I expected, right? High, medium, and low. So these are, these are just warm up uh, examples. So from next uh, one onwards, I'm going to touch upon the DAX concepts basically, okay? Let's go on to the third one. So what's the question here? Add a calculated column in products table for total units. So I need to add a calculated column, not a measure in the products table to get the total units, right? This is the column. So I need to get the total units from the table for each product. So let's go and do that in the products table. So I am in the products table now. So I have uh, the products and their categories. I have got uh, only two categories, A and B, right, and the products. So here, uh, the beginners usually they go and build a calculated column in this manner. And in this manner, I'll just show you. They would try something like this. So let me name it total, sorry, total units type column so I can distinguish between this and uh, the mesh I already have. Now I need to total the units from the sales table, right? And uh, show it here. The total for each product. If it is Caratera, I need to get the total. If I create a formula like sum, a unit sold from sales table. So what you are expecting here? Because remember, we have a relationship between the product table and the sales table, right? So what you would think, did it give you uh, the total as you expect for each product or something else? Let's uh, hit enter and see. Let's confirm the measure. I'm not getting the result I expected, right? You would wonder, it's showing uh, the same number for all the products. What you would think, okay, I'm in this table, I'm doing a calculated column, I'm summing the total unit sold from here, unit sold. Since we have a relationship between the product ID and the product ID here, it should give you the, the correct total, right? Let's uh, go back to the calculated column now. Whenever you create a calculated column, it actually creates a row context. What is a row context? It's a way of iterating one row at a time in a table, in a virtual table or a physical table like this. It works one row at a time 
and then you have the option to access that particular uh, row. For example, if I am here, then I can access this particular row. Right? Then, then it's move on to the next one, right? and so on. So this is calculating it, but when when it's in the first line, for example, let's say uh, it's in the first line, first product. When it's totaling the total unit sold, when it's summing the total unit sold from the sales table, there is uh, no filtering happening from uh, this product ID to the sales table. Why is that? It's because relationship doesn't uh, create a filter itself unless you use a function that will create uh, the filtering for you. So in this case, we need to use calculate. Calculate can do something, let me explain to you. If you put calculate, let's see what happens. So it gives you the number that you are expecting, right? different numbers for each product. This means it's calculating correctly for each product. What happens is when you are in a row context, to push these filters, right, this product ID, this line to the sales table where we have sales, to push it to that, now we need a calculate over here to convert this row context into a filter context. So calculate does a job, we call it context transition. Remember that this is context transition. So converting a row context into an equivalent filter context. So it is passing the filter from here to uh, the sales table. It filters based on this product ID one, then it sums. So that's why we are using calculator, calculate function. There are other ways also to get this, for example, if you use the function right, related table. Why we are able to use related table is because we have a relationship created, one to many or relationship created in this case. Right. In this case, you will be able to access the sales data table. But you cannot uh, hit enter here because you cannot return a table into a cell. So we need to, now we have access to the table, only the related content. What, what is related? Whatever product, uh, where the product ID is one, is now in this table for row number one. Now you can uh, use SUMX. SUMX is an iterator, right? You are learning iterators now. So iterator in the sense, again, we are creating a row context. That means SUMX will ask for a table. If you see, it's asking for a table. Give me a table. I'll go one row at a time and do the math or the calculation you want me to do. So here is the table with product ID one filtered and do the calculation. What do you want to do? Let's say if you put one, for example, let's see what happens. So it's summing one number of records actually, right? 93 records with one, 93 records with uh, Montana and so on. But you can do calculation that you prefer to do here. For example, I what I need is, uh, sales price multiplied by uh, units. Sorry, uh, I don't need the sales, I need the unit sold. So let me, sales unit sold. So I am summing the number of units. So this is another way where you can do this calculation. Okay, great. Let's move on to but as if you have any quick questions, let me know. I can just uh, finish it and go off. I can I can just just see one question uh, on previous query. Like when you're putting some x and one, it's like yeah. a count, uh, function, right? It works like a count if function. Yeah, exactly, exactly. You are right. The, yeah, this is actually even question asked in the YouTube chat. Okay, great. So, so, so it, it works exactly like count if what you're showing right now. Yeah, exactly. If it's you like put that. one, it's, it's equal to counting. Yeah, okay. okay. Great. Fine. So let's uh, move on to uh, the number four. So what do we have here? We have a ranking problem. This is a very really common problem I get uh, in the forum. 
So they apply the rank X function to rank something, then they get uh, rank one for every row here, right? There are two uh, measures here. Let's have a look at it. So what is the question? Uh, rank salespersons by segment on sale and unit sold. So this is uh, by units sold and the second one is for sales. So what's the hierarchy here? I have a segment, then a salesperson. Under each segment, I have a salesperson and their sales, right? Channel partners is 80,000. So this is the breakup, right? Salesperson and so on. So I want to rank under channel part partners uh, who is the highest and lowest, right? Based on total units. So this should be the rank one, two, three, four, and so on. Let's have a look at the measure. So by units, yes. Okay. So what's going on here? First, I'm checking using if, if only one salesperson is visible, right? That's why you don't get anything uh, at uh, segment level. You don't get any results because I am checking only one salesperson to be visible. This is fine. Then I am applying uh, the rank X function to calculate the rank for each person. Rank X to give you the ranking, ask for two parameters by uh, two uh, mandatory parameters, I would say. Uh, they are like a table and an expression. Very simple. Here I have provided a table and an expression. Right. How does it work? So it's it's asked for uh, all the salesperson. Give me all the salesperson you want to evaluate the ranking. That's why I have I have given all selected. What all selected does is it will clear the filter that's applied. Okay. Using all selected, it clears the filter. Uh, and gives you the original filter context. Please store the original filter context. So when you say salesperson, it removes the filter within the visual. And for each, uh, it's, it's iterating again. So iterating one at a time and create a ranking based on what? Based on uh, the total units sold. So sum of total units sold. So why I am getting uh, one everywhere in this case? Okay. Again, the concept is context transition. When you are inside rank X, you are doing an iteration, right? A row context, one row at a time. For each salesperson, it has to evaluate the sales, right? Let's uh, put our cursor over here, the first one. What is the context within this uh, function is now we have salesperson A. So this sum has to calculate the say, uh, total units for salesperson A. It's not calculating for that. It's, it's calculating for all. Why is that? There is no filter of salesperson A in this case. That's because this uh, function, this calculation doesn't know it's calculating for salesperson A. That's because we are not converting the row context into a filter context. So what is the function uh, that is able to do this is calculate. Let's apply calculate here. So when you, when you wrap it around calculate here, what happens? The time of iterating each salesperson will be passed on to uh, the field, passed down to the sales table, uh, data table as the filter and it uh, calculates the correct ranking here, right? So 12,500 is the highest and the lowest is 4,000, right? It's ranking correctly everywhere. Now, instead of doing this, if you apply a, a measure over here, let me show you a measure that already calculates units sold. Let me have a look at uh, total units. I already have a measure I just created before I, when I was building this, which basically sums the sales data table uh, on the unit sold column. So instead of using uh, my own calculation sum, let me use the rank X. Let me use 
total units. Let's see what happens here. I'm getting the correct results. So you must be wondering why you are not encapsulating this in calculate. Why I'm not doing this? The reason is whenever you create a measure, Power BI wraps it around a calculator. That's how the whole calculation works in Power BI, right? It's all about the context. So create a context, you need calculate. So it's not visible there is a calculate that is wrapped around that. That's why uh, you see, even if I remove this, it works perfectly. Okay, that's great. Next, we'll move on to the next problem where I need to rank the salesperson not by uh, units. Here I have the total sales. I need to rank them by sales as well. Okay, this is the ranking on units sold. This is the ranking on sales amount. Let's have a look at uh, what's happening here. So I have the similar calculation here. I'm checking for one value. Then I use rank X. It has two arguments. One is uh, the table. The other one is total sales. This is perfect. There is a context transition because there is a calculate within this measure. I'm using uh, values instead of uh, all selected. I've seen in many places, uh, users, uh, they try to use uh, values instead of all selected and, and so on. But you should clearly understand the difference between all selected and values. Yes, both are table functions. They, they both are returning tables. But the idea is values is not able to, uh, what do you call, change the filter context, right? It's not able to clear the filter context or anything. It's, it just returns what's visible in this filter context. Okay. Now, to calculate, uh, for example, let's have a look at uh, this particular value. To calculate uh, the sales okay, ranking for all the salesperson, you are supposed to return everything here. In the previous example I showed you, we, select, we used all selected to return it, right? But value will only return only return only this one. At this uh, point, right, we can only see sales percent A. This values. Let me just uh, show it to you how to debug if you, if, for, say, for example, let's say you are not uh, sure about all selected and values, somehow you, you have used values. Now you want to like uh, check uh, what is returning what is being returned through this table, okay? What, what this table contains in this context. If you want to check the output, uh, let me copy this part. Let, let me comment this out. You can mark this and press control slash on your keyboard. So this will uh, comment it. Now let me paste this and replace this with a function called content net x. This will just give you the output from this table. Right. Instead of returning total sales, let me return uh, the salesperson from the sales table. Let me put a day limiter as comma. So and uh, so it iterates again over this table and combine each and every value and concatenate and return. Uh, I will uh, confirm this measure. Now, if you look at it, I need to see all salesperson from A to J within this cell, right? Then only it can iterate uh, on each row and calculate the ranking. But it's not returning, right? Because of values. Values giving only what is visible in that particular context. If you use all selected, that clears the filter that's applied. Let me check now. Okay, now if you see, I'm getting all the salesperson that were visible under channel partners, right? So whoever is visible in, in under enterprise is coming there. So this is what I expect. So you must be clear now, be sure about uh, what's, uh, what's to be used in this case. 
So let me uh, delete this. And if you want to uncomment this, you can mark and uh, press control slash again, forward slash. The only change I need to do is to replace this with all selected. Okay. Now let's check our ranking. So now it's coming neatly. You're getting the expected results ranking for you. Okay, so we went through uh, the context transition, right? And the filter modifiers. That is uh, all selected and the difference between values and all selected in this case. Great, let's move on to the number five. In this case, a condition issue. So calculate 10% sales commission for each salesperson having sales over 7 million. So I have salesperson and they are sales over here. So I need to calculate 10%. The condition is sales should be over 7 million. So these three amounts, yes, they are correctly calculated for each, but look at the total. I'm getting 6.3 million, uh, which is 10% of this one, right? This is not correct because only three uh, salesperson have got uh, sales commission. It should be the total around 2.45 million here, right? Let's have a look at the measure. Let's go back and say sales commission measure. Okay, what I'm doing is I'm checking if uh, total sales is greater than 7 million. I return total sales multiplied by 10%. The calculation is correct. So if it is not, uh, by default, it will return blank. Okay, what's happening is you should understand the filter context. That's what I said at the beginning, evaluation context, where we have row context and filter context. It's very important to understand. So what is the filter context on this row for salesperson? So it's salesperson B, right? And so on. This is for F and J. When it comes to uh, this uh, D, uh, if you check the sales and uh, sales is not eligible, it will show uh, the person is not eligible for it will show zero blank. When it comes to this particular grand uh, total row, so what is the context? You are looking at, there is no filter on salesperson. You are looking at uh, all the salesperson over here. That's why it's calculating 6.3 million. So we need to iterate over each and every salesperson and add based on the condition then edit. So who can do that? Again, some x iterator function. These x functions are all iterator functions. Now, what do you want to iterate? You want to iterate over the salesperson. Okay. In this case, you must use, you should use values. Why you should use values? Let me explain it. Complete this measure. Let me format it. Okay. So it's trading each and every salesperson and calculating if the sale is greater than 7 million, then calculate the percentage. Fine. Let's check first. You are getting 2.4 million, which is correct, right? Addition of these three. It doesn't add what's above right in the same column so it works on it has this this cell or place has its own filter complex every place has its own filter complex now here when you use values in this line i need the first line i need only salesperson b right that's why i use values but when, when i am here i need everything that is visible in the filter complex i don't want to modify anything that's the reason we use values Great. Let's move on to question number six. So next three, four questions are going to be about calculating percentages. This is one of the most common uh, issues I find. What's the question here? So I have product category and uh, uh, segments. Under each product category, I have segment sales. So I want to calculate, show segment sales as a percentage of its respective category. Now, 
I have the sales here. I want to show uh, the percentage. It's correct here, 43% uh, of 36.2. Uh, this is the grand total. So I'm getting 43%, uh, which is correct. This is 100%, right? And so on. But the problem is if I uh, select, let's say, two segments, I want the total to be 100% all the time. And the addition of these two should always be 100%. But currently, it's calculating as a percentage of all uh, segments here, which is not correct. So I, I should build the measure in such a way that it, it will show me 100% every time I make selection on my segment. So what's going on here in this measure? Let's go and uh, have a look at the measure. OK. I have my, okay, anyhow, you need to divide. What you need to divide is uh, this, this sales in this line should be divided by uh, total that is coming from here, right? And so on for each line. I have the total sales, perfect. Then I want to divide by uh, the category total. To get the category total, what you need to do, you need to clear the filter on the segments. So on the selected segment, not all. What is selected here? Only two items. Clear filter only from what is selected, not from all. So which function is able to do or clear the filter from what is selected? The function is all selected, but here I have used all. All will clear the whole column, right? Filter, whatever is selected or not selected, it will clear it. So you have to be clear about where to use all and all selected, right? Let me use all selected. And confirm this measure. Okay, now you are getting the correct percentages. 91 plus nine is 100. Now, if you remove the filter from this, it's still working fine. And the selection you make, it's going to be working fine. So that's where you need to be clear about uh, the calculate modifiers. They are all, all selected and there are some other. We'll discuss about this. Oh, it's very important. Otherwise, your calculation is going to be wrong. Okay, what's the next uh, percentage calculation? It's the same thing. Okay, calculate segment gross sales or sales contribution percentage to respective category. It's the same calculation. I want to get uh, this particular amount percentage over its uh, category, right? Let's see how I have built the measure this time. It's not working. I'm getting 100% everywhere. So I'm not getting uh, any, 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 any results even if I select anything, right? Something seriously wrong here. Okay, let's have a look at the measure. So I'm using uh, variables here, right? As I told you before, uh, it's efficient to use variables. Okay, let's see how it works. I need to divide. Actually, this is my result. I need to divide the total sales. I mean, uh, this particular is in this case, uh, 400, 11,000. I need to divide it by uh, total sales, all segment, which is, uh, which is this one, right? 27.6 million. How do I get this 27.6 million? By clearing the filter over this. So how, how did I calculate this particular total? Okay, total sales all segment. I use calculate and total sales. What is total sales? Total sales is uh, the uh, total sales in this particular filter context. I need to modify that. So I mean, I have assigned this total sales to a variable. So instead of using this measure, I'm using the variable. And I'm clearing the filter from the segment in the visual. Okay, this is fine. So why I'm not getting this? The answer is simple, but very important. Whenever you use, remember, whenever you use a variable, this variable, when it's evaluated, you assign a measure, the result is saved and it becomes a constant, okay? Now, when you are using it inside a calculate, any filter uh, arguments you have here, okay? could be a new filter, passing a new filter, modification of filter, it's not going to affect this particular variable because it's it doesn't have any connection with the data model. It's a constant now, 
right? It's in this case, it's as good as what? 411.108. It's same as the, same as that. Now, if you clear this and replace it with the total sales. Okay. Now let's check what happens. It's going to have an impact. It's going to be working because this is calculated, recalculated based on the new filter context. So this is very important to understand uh, in terms of variables. Hope you are clear about that. Let's move on to example number eight. So again, I'm sort of calculating the same thing. Instead of a category and segment, I have year and months. I want the monthly uh, monthly sales as a percentage of its particular, it's uh, related uh, year, right? I want to divide this by this, so I need to get the total sales and so on. So here what's happening, I'm getting 100% everywhere the year and the months, even if you select any months over here, it's not going to be working. Uh, something's wrong with the mesh. Let's have a look at the mesh this time. I'm using variables again. So I'm assigning the total sales. I'm calculating the yearly sales by removing the filter on the month name because I have applied month names over here and calculating the total sales. Just correct. And I learned two lessons from my previous examples. Uh, I'm building my measure correctly. Total sales divided by total sales for all months. Then why I'm not getting the results? Yeah, we have a different issue. I'm using the dates table here, right? That's where this month name is coming. If you look at the month name, they've been nicely ordered, right? January, February, March, and April, and so on not in the alphabetical order like April and so on, right? So how did I manage to sort this month? Go back to your model and check the dates table. This is my month name, which I used in my visual, right? If you look at uh, sort by column, I am using the month number to sort it in the order I want. Where is the month number? This is the month number. It's a numeric value. So I use this to sort this particular column. So whenever you clear the filter from a column, you also need to clear the associated sorting column as well. In this case, I need to clear the month number. Now let's have a look at the results. Okay, perfect. It's coming correctly now. I'm getting the results, expected results. Great. Hope you've got that. Now let's move on to the nine. Calculate plug sales percentage of related product category, keeping only product. All these uh, examples that I just covered, okay, in the past three examples, I had in the hierarchy like uh, year, month, and product category and segment and so on, right? Uh, but in this case, the requirement is I need the percentage. For example, this is a, I'm a realized product and it belongs to category A, right? There are three products. What I need is uh, this percentage. It's calculating correctly, not an issue, not a problem now. This 9.5% should be divided by this right, category total. And uh, this should be divided by, again, category total. And it's giving me the correct results. There is no issue. But uh, I don't want to keep the product category here. I want to remove it. Still, I want to calculate 
under regular sales as a percentage of its own its uh, related product category sales. If I remove the percentage changes, now it's calculating as a percentage of 63.9 million. This is the grand total. This is not for category A, this is for all the categories. Why I need such a solution is, for example, if you visualize this sort of uh, matrix into a uh, table, chart like this, stack bar chart, uh, you see the correct percentage here, right? 34.36. I am uh, I'm including category and the product. But if I don't want to see category A, I'm a real large category B, character. But if I want to remove this, for example, now what happens? Here, it again uh, doesn't calculate what I want to try to. So how do you achieve this? Let's go and check how the measure has been kept. Okay. Let me put this back, product category, so we'll be clear about how the calculation is working. And let's expand. Okay, I'm here. Okay, I'm a read lab for category A. I'm getting the total sales. I'm removing the filter. How do I remove the filter in this case? I'm saying, okay, all except. What does all except do here? It can remove the filter. It removes the filter from the products table, the whole products table, all the columns, and keep only the filter that you specify in the uh, subsequent arguments, right? You say, keep the filter only for, uh, category and remove the filter from everything else. But in this table, what do you have? Uh, you have product ID, product and category, right? So, uh, so the product filter is removed. So you are getting 27.6 million, uh, which is correct. Okay, which is correct and working as long as you have this uh, included in the filter context, okay? Within this visual, in that particular query. So you already have this, uh, product category included over here, so it can clear it, right? The moment you remove this, it doesn't have reference to it, okay? It doesn't exist there in the context. So what, how do you handle this one, okay? There is something called cross-filtering. Let me uh, select product now. If you select, let's go back to this Amarilla, that's the problem. If you filter Amarilla now, it filters the table, right? This particular row. This is called cross filtering of the same table, but you get other columns also filtered. Now, product category A is already there for you to access. So, but if you can access this particular uh, value, right? When 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 you have Amarilla in the filter context, and you have, if you can access this, and you can pass this as your filter uh, modifier here. Right, uh, create a new filter context on that. How do you do that? So, if you go back to this measure, now the function that's able to bring what is in the filter context is values function. You say bring the product category. If you look at this row, when you select Amarilla, I just showed you just a while ago also filters the same row, uh, cross-filtering. So it will push the filter here. It's pushing the filter for uh, category A. Okay, now let's, uh, still this is not correct. I'll show you what's happening. Now it's giving 100% everywhere. That is because we still have the filter on the product. So I don't want the product for all of this, right? I need to remove it remove the filter from the products table out of the product you can use remove filter which is same as all uh, i will use uh, product okay so i am passing the filter from the cross filtering for a product category and removing the filter from products let me confirm this Now this is working perfectly even when the category is there. Now let me remove this. You're still getting the correct results, right? 
see here 34.36. So this is number nine. We learned how to use the cross filtering uh, facility here and remove filters. Okay. Now we are moving on to the last one, which is okay. Calculate percentage of sales for units below 500. Let's have a look at it. This is a bit tough, I would say, at the beginning, but uh, let me explain it. You will be able to understand it. Uh, uh, I'll go step by step. First, calculate percentage of sales for units below 500. So I have products and they are total sales over. Simple. Then I have another measure that calculates uh, total sales for units below 500. Let's have a look at the measure. Sorry. So, clicking on the wrong one. This is the correct one. Sales below 500. So, I am calculating the total sales where I specify a filter condition here. Okay, I'll come back to this filter the sales table on the unit sold column where okay. unit sold is less than 500, right? It basically apply a filter on the uh, sales table where unit sold is less than 500. Okay, this is what it does. Then it calculates the total sales. It's correct. It's giving me the correct number. Now, what I expect here is uh, the percentage. So I want uh, the percentage of sales for units below 500. This has to be divided by this total. Okay. Uh, this this is where I need to get the correct percentage, but it's giving me 100%. Okay. How do you calculate such things in DAX? Let's have a look at the measure. This is the measure. Let's go step by step. So I need to divide this particular sales, 811,000. So that is already in a measure, right? I assign it to sales below 500 variable, which I have here. Then I divide it by uh, the total, which is 6.4 million, which I'm trying to calculate again. So how do I calculate that value? So I need to do two things. To get this value, I need to first calculate uh, I need to get the value uh, everywhere, right? The same value has to be in there in every row, 6.4 million, right? Uh, over here, over here, and over here, and so on, right? So how, how do I calculate that? I need to first filter for less than 500 units. I'm filtering the sales table, and we're applying a filter where the units sold is less than 500, correct? And I remove the filter from products. Why do I remove the filter from products? Because I want the total. Earlier we learned you can remove the filter and get the total, right? Why this is not happening? This is because of expanded table concept in DAX. What is expanded table? In your Power BI model, you create relationships, right? Let's go back to the model. This is your sales table and you have two dimensions. One is uh, the dates, the other one is the product. Whenever you create one to many relationship, the one side of your relationship, the table fields will get, uh, will be added to, uh, to the fact table here in this case, and it will create a expanded table, which is not a physical table, but it's uh, in the time of evaluation, uh, within your formula, it will create it in the memory. So uh, if you see, this is your uh, dates table, and this could be your uh, products table, sort of a V lookup, right? You, you do V lookup in uh, Excel. Uh, this will come here, right? Because of the relationship, all the columns will come here. Now, this particular sales table will get expanded onto uh, whatever relationships you have. If you have another table here, and have a relationship that will also get uh, added 
create a huge table. So when you say uh, in this uh, in this uh, calculation, let me go back to this measure. Is that when you refer to this sales data table, you are referring referring to the whole table. You are referring to the the expanded table, right? Okay. Why, why, why it's creating a, a wrong calculation? Okay. What happens is, calculate the order of operation is like, okay, you have the machine. So it will first uh, remove the filter from the products, right? Okay, fine. Now, before you calculate, you have this sales table here. This table is filtered by uh, the product over here, Amarillo. So you are calculating less than 500 against a table which has already been filtered by a product. That's why you are getting the same amount. Okay. So you should remember, you should know that every argument in this calculate okay, is evaluated, what do you call, uh, independently, right? One removes the filter. Again, when you refer to the sales table, it's already filtered okay this filter doesn't influence the sales table that's why you get the same amount every day. now instead of filtering the whole table filter only the column you need so you get all i can say units sold Move the filter only from unit sold column and apply this condition. Let's have a look at this. Now this is working perfect. Okay, if you look at this uh, argument here, there is a short way to write this. This is what DAX does you know, in the background. When you apply predicate or condition like this, every filter uh, argument is a table you are passing to calculate here, actually. So earlier we, we saw it was passing a table, right, of values. When you write it this way, this actually gets converted into uh, this. So what you can do now, you can apply this particular as well. So when you confirm this, now you get the same results. It should be correct. So let's, uh, with this, I am, yeah, at the mark. I've completed all my 10 examples. Let me go back to the presentation and see this concept that we did today, right? Key concepts, evaluation concept, where we learned filter uh, filter context and the raw context, right? How we ran into problems I, and uh, how we fixed that. Iterators, some X functions and iterators in calculated columns, as well as in iterator functions like sum X and contact, concatenate X, rank X, and so on. Then context transition, very important. We learned how to deal with that. And finally, we uh, learned expanded tables. I use the word extended and expanded, so expanded tables. Above all, calculate. So it's very important you are aware of how calculate works in this case. Okay, great. Now, one final slide I would like to share with you is some best practices. Please format your DAX or whenever you write, make it clear for yourself uh, and for others. Okay, you can use DAXformatter.com or there are uh, external tools. They also provide uh, formatting for you. And uh, before everything, to write simple DAX, you should have a better data model. I would suggest always go for, try to go for uh, star schema. That makes your Text writing much easier. 
keep your DAX uh, calculations simple. Don't overcomplicate things. It's easy for you to maintain, and later you will look, you will look at it. You know, it will be easy for you. Try to keep it simple. So use table name with column, uh, calculated columns, and not for measures. When you refer to a measure or directly refer the measure, right? When you refer a table, a column in a table, you can use the table name and the column name. You can use user-friendly names uh, and use uh, You can write even with uh, space in between, right? Total space sales, it doesn't matter. You don't have to merge them without space. Uh, make it user-friendly and also put your measures into uh, folders, organize them into folders. Again, using variables is very important in terms of readability and performance. And use explicit, explicit measures. Always create your own measures. Don't try to drag and drop uh, fields as values. There are so many uh, advantages when you use explicit measures, and it will uh, help you get rid of a lot of issues later. Filter columns, not tables. This was our last example, right? I, I filtered by a table, then I ran into problems. Okay. Then finally, uh, I mostly use a tabular editor for my DAX calculations and DAX Studio for performance tuning. So if you can use them, uh, tabular editor 2 is free, DAX Studio is free. Uh, it will make your life easy. Okay, the last slide, if you would like to connect with me, I have my uh, LinkedIn Twitter handle. Also, you can send me email if you have any questions on DAX, Power Query, General Power BI, okay. And my YouTube channel where I have a lot of DAX and visualization videos. So you can see my website and the blogs there. You will also find a blog on uh, uh, today's session. Uh, you will find file that I use in this session. You can download it, uh, the Power BI file from my blog over here. Great. For us with this, I think I am at the end of the session. You're muted, I believe. Yeah, good. Yeah, we are good with that. I'm just checking some questions, you know, in the uh, chat on YouTube and Zoom. Most of them has been answered. Great. Great for me. Lovely. Okay. That was lovely. You know, it was a really good session about, you know, how, how so small basics are so important to understand the context, filter context, and uh, row context, and why you should uh, use not calculated columns. You know, uh, it it was really nice. It was really lovely. As a beginner, you know, it was really great. And uh, yeah, good to know that. Good. Yeah. yeah. These are real world problems. I just pick them uh, through forum and uh, questions that come to me. Yeah, I, I personally, I'll tell you my experience when I was trying to like uh, write DAX function, I used to always come into a problem of like getting all those numbers repeated again. And I used to never know why it is to happen. And then I just read it somewhere that you just wrap it and calculate and that will do the job. And I really uh -huh. don't know what was the logic behind it. But then later on, as I get involved myself with these calculations, I really understand how this the context works, how the stable expansion works. So it's really important. And, and I think that uh, what I can share is uh, with my experience, what I can share that try to use a small data set, very small, uh, where you can really see the data. And then you try to apply these filters so you can really understand what is happening. And as great to uh, some tools, what uh, Pavi has told, like, uh, uh, tax editor and those are really helpful. Those are really helpful to understand. You can try to write your measures over there and uh, you can really learn out tax. And that would really be awesome. So I think uh, any questions, anything you can unmute and ask uh, if you don't yeah, mind. So you can unmute and ask if anybody has any question. And I'm just monitoring it on YouTube as well. <laughs> Uh, well, I think everything uh, all set. 
So for me, thank you. But uh, we are just going to end the session on YouTube right now. YouTube live. We are going to end it, and we are going to see uh, be back on Zoom. Still, the party is on in the Zoom, and uh, make sure that you register for the next meetup, which is going to happen on tenth of June. And uh, thank you for me once again for this lovely presentation and coming and sharing to the community over here. And we hope to do some more sessions in uh, the meetup groups as well as in Jitta and even here in the Mam. So we are connecting both the uh, regions. So uh, as as his challenge says, Excel port, you know. So we are trying to conquer both the areas, even <laughs> the Excel side. So see you soon, my friends, and okay. stay connected. And I'll thank be you. seeing you soon. Till then, yeah, thank you, care. everyone. Thank you, everyone. Thank you for us for this opportunity. It was nice presenting, and uh, thanks for attending. Um, have a nice day, everyone. Bye bye. Yeah, but before I end, always uh, for me, I ask my speaker. You know, any any special word, any special quote, and then we end the YouTube live. Anything. Yeah, any, any kind of, yeah, from anything you can say to our YouTube audience, any last word or anything. Okay. Stay hungry, stay hungry and learn. That's it. Okay. okay. Right. <laughs> for knowledge, be hungry for knowledge. Never miss a chance whenever now you have so many ways uh, of uh, opportunities of learning uh, through meetups like uh, Faraz is having. Uh, a lot of valuable, you know, uh, lectures coming and, you know, it's a very important way to learn through this channel and uh, improve your knowledge. All the best. Thank you, Rami. Okay. Oh.